okay welcome back and uh, in continuation to what we were doing uh, just a little recap we uh, saw or learned how to create uh, LVMs how to add physical volumes how to add volume groups etc <coughs> and uh, now we are going to actually install uh, and a VM on this LVM we have just created by the way the to-do list let me write one more thing for you mm, which I fear that I will forget Linux HVM machines that's right and installing VMs using command line okay that's important okay <coughs> fine so let's create a virtual machine uh, and we have our our 192.168 okay this is our Apache uh, this is our URL from where we would get the installation files for our para virtual machine I'm going to install para virtual machines fast and it's minimal and all that okay so where is that virtual machine manager here it is and I'm going to create new new okay and I'm going to use PV para virtual machine Linux uh, let's write sent OS 64 bit uh, version is going to be 5.4 <coughs> on LVM this is going to be the name of the virtual machine so we are sure that um, when we look into the config files and all that we are we know what uh, what we deal with and this brings me to another important point which I have to cover is somewhere around here maybe good naming scheme conventions for VMs okay and all files in general okay hmm save minimize this <coughs> okay so pvm centos 5.464 on lvm press forward I'm going to use a para virtual machine so press forward OS type is going to be Linux and uh, Red Hat 5 CentOS 5 is Red Hat 5 press next it's going to be a network install that's the only option install media is going to be this lovely install media and kickstart if I have any I don't have hmm I can provide a kickstart by the way so uh, just a, a trick or tip for you go to this storage you remember that we created uh, into this directory various www.html we created a file called kvm kickstart.config <laughs> So it's not basically a KVM kickstart. I can copy, come on, copy KVM kickstart as uh, general, or just write ks.cfg. Let's not waste time. ks.cfg, what's written here? Okay, let's see. So, oh man, this is, okay, a little editing needed. this is because I copy paste it from install text press enter enter here delete this okay yeah now I got the idea uh, 
can't do okay so network device host name I'm going to use uh, Linux machine okay I can skip this because I just want to save time so I'll just say boot proto is ECP and delete the whole file whole line sorry root password I don't remember what I said but it might be red hat firewall disable and all that disable fine fine okay I don't want I just want core packages and I don't want to touch these things I do want to disable all these stupid services I don't need and I don't need this <coughs> okay so and partition okay lovely good point partition swap 26 oh it's already defined partition swap 512 extended so that would make about 3 GB and we already have 2.8 okay so let's have 2000 and let's give it 384 okay this was just a tape for you I believe there's nothing else network device if there's anything wrong with it we'll come to know okay save and exit <coughs> ks.config let's see if it is readable yes it is readable by others so it would it would be readable by Apache as well because it is owned by root and group by root okay fine so ks.cfg we know it now so copy this put it here ks.cfg lovely okay press next and block device mm, block device is going to be where is our block device scroll up scroll up scroll up this is our block device copy minimize this paste it here <coughs> okay next virtual network default fine next physical memory 512 is enough let's give it two CPUs <coughs> forward disk size see this disk size it has picked it up automatically from the LVM slice we created for it okay so this is how it will work kick start source kick kernel arguments fine okay it, it my basic purpose of demonstration is over but let's go ahead with the actual installation what does it say uh, install location CentOS 5.4 x86 fail what's wrong with it um, opening URL so and so failed okay never mind let's see what's wrong what what did we do wrong here hmm. <coughs> list aha uh -huh. this does not exist here so it's in slash data cd images list this one exists ls minus l of course it exists but doesn't have execute permissions on it uh, I wonder why it changed <coughs> okay so change mode uh, plus read and execute to oh, change mode to send OS minus R that should do it and if I do finish yes now it's working so it was unable to pick the files from the source so let's do full screen hmm okay determining IP so everything is going through the kickstart <coughs> okay Zen virtual frame buffer or VFB great so far so good it should install under few minutes 
I have horrible experience with Windows. It installs at least it takes an hour Windows XP. It's so boring. Okay. Luckily it will install only 730 megabytes. We wasted our, <laughs> our time maybe you can say that creating 3 GB of disk. But it was important to sh demonstrate to you how can we increase the size of uh, an LVM. If I would have selected more packages it would defi definitely would have needed more space and of course 900 MB which I initially set for the LVM was not going to be enough. So three minutes it will need to install. Okay so for three minutes what can we do for three minutes? Let's see. View full screen no. Minimize this and uh, I have updated the virtualization page which I showed to you uh, earlier. Uh, let's go to main page here and let's do this refresh here. Th this should work now. Okay, this is working. Mm. Uh, what I've done, a new change is I've created a sub document out of the virtual main virtualization document. Why? Because it was uh, large in size and it was giving me a warnings that it has increased in size uh, and it may give problems. I have experienced uh, a document larger than 32 kilobytes. I have experienced problems in past uh, rather recently that you know once you save it all disappears just a blank page shows up. So this is the original document virtualization it goes all the way till here API level virtual various virtualization types from here onwards you click this and it will take to a specific Zen uh, document and all those things and the Zen architecture and network model everything is there as I showed you earlier in, in initial videos it's all there and uh, Another thing I have added here is of course uh, uh, added a couple of notes for performance issues this AC, A, A, ACIP, ACPI and APIC. <coughs> These two advanced configuration and power interface ACPI and advanced power in, uh, ad advanced programmable interrupt controller APIC. These two are very significant uh, if you are dealing with any of the HVMs, because H, you know HVM is presented with full model of of almost the full model of the of a machine, the processor, the desk, the controllers, the buses, etc. All are emulated kind of. So I have mentioned that here. Uh, hopefully, it will be helpful. And the, this this is these these are the links to some of the links which I found useful to install para virtual drivers on Windows. Why so many links? Because there is a reason to it. Zen, uh, Citrix Zen or Zen Source, uh, they have proprietary drivers for Windows. They, they provide it only with their commercial product. Uh, VMware has their own what, uh, what uh, I must say para virtual drivers which they provide with their ESX server and all that. Novel provides their own drivers so we had to find a solution which would work with open source Zen uh, and the uh, para virtual drivers which would work on open source Zen for Windows and for Linux as well. Interestingly if you run an HVM Linux machine it will also run a bit slower and I already demonstrated to you in second or third video maybe that if you create an HVM, Linux HVM, it will it will run a bit slower, uh, slow performance, slower performance, a bit slower performance than the actual uh, para virtual machine. So that the trick is to install uh, para virtual drivers inside that. Okay, our installation is kind of uh, finishing. Only 30 seconds left. So you see, we created LVM the previous video then we created a machine a virtual machine on top of it provided that LVM has disk 
to that virtual machine and that virtual machine then further created partitions inside that LVM uh, assuming it as a disk you cannot create uh, you cannot create partitions directly in an LVM on the OS layer where that LVM is created itself but you can what you can do is you assign that LVM as a disk to a VM or any other uh, OS for that matter and it would uh, use it as a disk